In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Even as the general convention of the Episcopal Church is meeting this weekend in Baltimore, Maryland, I was moved in my spirit to give thanks for the ministry, for the services, for the leadership of the presiding bishop, Michael Curry, over the last seven years. During this time, Bishop Curry has reminded us, among other things, of the power of love. The power of love in bringing about a positive change in the world. Repeatedly, he has spoken, he has preached, he has written, <clears throat> he has advised us that love is the way. And that is also the title of his recent book, Love is the Way. And in this book, Bishop Curry insists that love is the most practical solution, perhaps repeating himself again, that love is the most practical solution to all the problems that our world is facing today. In this book, he writes, and I'm quoting here, we are living right now in a world on selfishness, indifference, and even hatred, and it doesn't look good. What does it get us? Mass shootings, the murder of innocents, brutal dictatorships, the suppression of ethnic and religious minorities, the mistreatment of refugees, the rise of racism, anti-Semitism, nationalistic nativism, and xenophobia. Fear begins to rule our lives. People are hurting and hating others because they are different. We have wars and rumors of wars. We have an earth that has been exploited to a crisis point. What it all adds up to is just that mutually assured destruction. Now that's insanity. Suddenly, a world built on love starts to look like the same one. Love is God's way, the moral way, but it's also the only thing that works." End quote. What words of wisdom? Simple words, and yet very profound, and also very critical. It's not just kind of fantasizing. It's, it's practical, it's logical, it's sensible, it's common sense, if you really think about it. As we continue to pray, and strive for justice and peace in our own ways as God's children. These words of a presiding bishop is a good reminder that the only logical and sensible way forward for us as a church, as a nation, as humanity as a whole is love. Now this power of love is best described in the parable of the Good Samaritan that we just heard as our gospel lesson this morning. As we heard, this popular, all too well-known story was part of Jesus' conversation with the religious lawyer. Jesus was not really teaching his followers as such. He was, it was more like a conversation which I think other people were kind of eavesdropping on. And then this conversation with this lawyer, who's actually a religious leader, a scribe, don't assume an attorney 
or an advocate or lawyer as we think today. It's more a religious profession back in Jesus' day. And here, the conversation, the question is about eternal life. What must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus' answer was to love God and to love one's neighbor. In fact, that was the, the lawyer's response. And Jesus says, oh, you got it right. There you go. But the lawyer kept on wanting to justify himself. And he asked, who is my neighbor? And in fact, that, that, the, the, the response is actually quite interesting. The question is rather interesting. And who is my neighbor? In response, Jesus goes on to tell the parable of the Samaritan who stopped to care for a wounded man risking his own life. Now remember, this was no ordinary person that the Samaritan was stopping for. The assumption is that the person was wounded, the person was robbed, was a Jew. And here is a Samaritan stopping to care for this man. In the first century Palestine, the relations between Jews and Samaritans were far from amiable. In a way, the Samaritans, the Samaritan was stopping for his enemy to help him. So for Jesus, it is the Samaritan who is the neighbor. Not the priest, not the Levite, who should have stopped for one of their own people. But it is the Samaritan. The interesting thing here is that the story was not meant for the Samaritans. Rather, Jesus was challenging his fellow Jewish sisters and brothers that to know God and to inherit eternal life, they have to get over the barriers of divisions and love others, including those who may be assumed or thought to be their enemies. In the community of Jesus, in the way of love, the neighbor, the person closest to us, is not one's own, but the exact opposite. It is the one who is different from us. And the advice that Jesus gives to the lawyer is, go and be that neighbor. Go and do likewise. Don't just be a neighbor for your own people, for people who look like you, people who worship like you, people who think like you. But be a neighbor to those people who might be, who are, who are different from you. Even those who might be completely opposed to you. People who your own people may hate. People you may think to be your enemies. Go and be the neighbor for that person. We need this sort of love more than ever today. In a world that's struggling with divisions, with hatred and fear of those who are different, the parable of the Good Samaritan invites us to be compassionate, and to be caring. As Bishop Curry says, this is the only way. It doesn't mean that we don't act or work or do anything to make for what is right or to make things right. Rather, we continue to do what we can to make this world a better place with love and kindness. And compassion we continue to believe in the power of love embodied in Christ Jesus exemplified in Christ Jesus Amen